But now, big news on the TV front because Miriam Margulis has ditched the real Marigold on Chur Gang to go it alone in a brand new series. It starts tomorrow night, 9 o'clock, BBC One. It's been heavily trailed over the weekend and I'm really looking forward to it. It's called Miriam's Big American Adventure and she's a fantastic presence on screen. Brilliant actor as well, of course, and great voiceover person, but Absolutely. such great engaging company on screen. And I just, I love her whenever she's on a chat show because you know she's going to do something outrageous. She never fails. I wonder how she'll cope on radio. Let's find out right now as we welcome back to Talk Radio, Miriam Margulies. Good morning, Miriam. Good morning, darling. <laughs> How are you? What do you mean? I'm, I'm not frightened of radio. It's how I start. <laughs> of course. And let me ask you, how long were you in America filming this for? Because it's a series, isn't it, that starts tomorrow night? Yes, yeah, seven weeks. We were in the States from Chicago to New Orleans, and it was a fantastic experience for me. I, I was, I'm very nervous about what people are going to say about it, but it was a fabulous experience. Do you know what, Miriam, you're, you're, and I hate, to, I hate to bring this, but you're 77 and you are still doing the kind of jobs that people 50 years younger than you would die to get. It's an incredible uh, job. Well, I'll be 77 in May. I'm actually technically 76 Okay, now, 76. But, but I, I take the point that I'm doing things that expected. So I'm, I do things. We're having slight trouble hearing you, Miriam. Sorry, I wonder if you could uh, whack your phone or rub some lard on it or something or change position maybe for us. Oh, are you not hearing me properly? Oh, that's better now. So you're yeah, intimate you there now. for a moment. It's a touch of the Norman Colliers, for those who remember that. So oh. listen, this, this trip you went on, the first, your first, you went to Chicago, didn't you? You, were, you, spent the, you spent some time with rappers. What were you doing there? Well, I, I wanted to, to meet the, the, what I suppose I'll call the real people the people at, at the rough end of things. And so um, I was sent to meet uh, some rappers. Now, I've never met rappers in England, never mind in America. <laughs> I always thought they were people in shops who prepared Christmas presents. But <laughs> this, this was very, very different. And it, it was an eye-opener for me. And I don't think they'd met anyone like me before. I bet they so had, Miriam. It, it, was, it was fun and a little bit scary because it was in gangland and people get shot. And in fact, um, in one place we went to, someone had been shot about three minutes before we arrived. Oh, my God. But one, so, of, them, one of them fell in love with you because he recognised you as Professor Sprout from Harry Potter. I know. That was so touching. There was this gorgeous big um, rapper, you know, a, a Rastafarian kind of person. Yeah. And, <laughs> and there was fat little old me, and he was pleased to meet me, and I, I was thrilled to be <laughs> lovely. And of course, like all... I learned a lot from it, you know. I really did. It taught, I met people that I would never meet in ordinary life, and, and so it was a, a learning experience. And you went to see if the American dream still exists. Does it still exist? Um, well, I'm tempted to say that you should watch the programme. We will. On the, on the whole, I would say... For a lot of people, it doesn't exist. And that's why they voted for Trump, mm. because they thought that he will provide for them what they dreamed of. You and actually... my fear is that they won't, that they, he can't. You met, that, well, let's talk about that. You met a, a family, a Trump voting Texan family. They had 12 kids. Yes, and I've remained friends with them. And that was the most unlikely thing, because they are believing Christians, they are creationists. So they don't believe in evolution and they are pro-life as opposed to my position, which is pro-choice. And yet I just fell in love with them. I thought they were wonderful, wonderful family, wonderful people. They've been to see me in England. We are still in touch. Wow. We have become friends. You read, I read, um, I read that they actually pray. You talked about this family. You said they actually pray before they made love. Yes. <laughs> they told me that. These days, I pray for the chance to make love. <laughs> I, I, I said, is that because... I'm not going to say rude words on, no. on radio mm. this time in the morning because it would upset people over their porridge. But um, I asked them, you know... Do, it, it, what are you praying for? Is it a good... Um, a good one. And then you, a good one. Yes. yes. <laughs> and they said yes, presumably. Well, n no, I mean, they want children yeah. and they want more children. I mean, she'd be quite happy to have another baby and she's nearly 50. <gasps> wow. So actually, I think she's over 50. But they were just the nicest people. And 
I've always had a slight prejudice against Christians. You know how people have a prejudice against Jews? Yes. <laughs> well, I, I return the compliment. <laughs> but I have to say that when you meet a proper Christian, a real Christian, yeah. They are just delicious, wonderful people. Actually, you talk about religion. You you also, in one of the programmes, you, you meet a far-right anti-Semite in Arkansas who, who argued with you that Jewish people should be sent to Madagascar. Now, you're Jewish. What did you make of that? And why well, Madagascar? It was horrible. It, it was horrible. And actually, I didn't meet him because he wouldn't meet me. I had to sit in, in the car. Wow. And he was in the hotel room, and we could, we were able to communicate through, you know, through um, loudspeakers and wires. What, he, he wouldn't meet you, be, he wouldn't meet he, you because he you were Jewish? Meet, he refused to meet anybody who wasn't uh, white, you know, like him. Wow. Um, a wasp. And, uh, and, of course, the whole Madagascar thing was mooted first by the Nazis in the 30s before the final solution arrived. They were going to ship all yes. Jews off, they said, to Madagascar. Ah. Well, I mean, they didn't, thank God. No. But mm. it shows what, what inanities, what stupidities still exist among ignorant and dangerous people. I mean, I think he's a pile of <laughs> personally, you know. That's my, that's and, of course, such extreme language isn't to be recommended. To tell them. <laughs> Let me ask you very quickly, though, Miriam. You mentioned about starting in radio. We know your voice from many, many kind of marvellous adverts. I think you've got the sexiest voice in British acting and broadcasting, partly because of one commercial in particular. We're talking about childhood snacks. This was my favourite oh, snack. The, the, the bunny, the, the yes. Cadbury's bunny. Here the she is. bunny. As a gorgeous West Country bunny. 